Welcome to our Good Friday Passion Play and uh, do come in a little bit nearer if you can. It's Everyone seems to be a little scattered so it would be lovely if we could get you a little bit closer. Citizens of Castle Donington, lend me your ear. I have a message to bring to you today that could change your life on this Good Friday. In 2023, I'm here to share with you the news of the first Good Friday over 200 years ago. Use your imaginations and journey back in time with me as we hear what really happened to those involved at the time. We travel back to Jerusalem to the time of Jesus' crucifixion. Jesus and his disciples were in Jerusalem for the Jewish Passover, along with thousands of other Jews from all over the known world. The city was filled to capacity. It was a time of heightened tension. One such traveler was a man named Simon of Cyrene. He travelled nearly 800 miles to get there. We hear his eyewitness account. It was such a shock. I'm still trembling and shaking now. I was just coming into the city with everyone else when this soldier grabbed me and forced me to carry his cross. The fear, the terror welled up inside me. I just staggered forward and as I took the crossbeam from his hands I looked into his face and it was as if time stood still for a moment. The noise and the shouting and the crying seemed to recede into the background and I saw the pain and suffering of the world in his eyes and yet such compassion for me that I was overwhelmed by love. Even now, it doesn't make sense. The blood was pouring down his face from where the thorns of a crown were cutting into his head. And then, a lash from a whip like a bolt from the blue brought me back to reality, and I started dragging his cross. It seemed like an eternity. I'm no weakling, but even as fit as I am, it was exhausting. It's no wonder Jesus had fallen under its weight. <coughs> Jesus, yes, Jesus is his name. This was the one people on the journey into the city had been talking about. It's a long way from Cyrene to Jerusalem for the Passover, but as a Jew, I had to make the journey. And on this last part of the journey, so many were talking about him being the Messiah, the one to rescue us from the Romans. And now, here he is, dying on a cross I was forced to carry. It's the end, but somehow, even after only a few painful minutes of following him, I believe the words nailed above his head. But how do I find out more about what this man has done? I can still see in my mind his eyes looking into mine. Is it really the end? Alongside Mary, the mother of Jesus, was another Mary, Mary of Magdalene, from whom Jesus had driven out 
Seven demons. This is her story. Oh, Master, how could it have come to this? Why? Why, Jesus, did this have to happen? Just a few hours ago, we were all together at the Passover meal in that upper room, and you prayed for us, your disciples. You said we would be like sheep scattered among the wolves. But this, you told us we wouldn't understand, and you were right. How could we? Seeing you nailed to a cross, your body whipped and covered in blood, your head bleeding from the thorns digging into your scalp. Why, Lord, did they have to humiliate you and hold you up for ridicule? Why? Why even now they don't believe the sign above your head? You are the King of the Jews. It's ironic that Pilate is the one to proclaim it, especially as he doesn't believe it. Why? It is always the women that have to stand and watch their loved ones die. I promise Jesus that I will be there for your mother. I thank God that even in your dying, you thought of her, the woman who gave birth to you, and John will love her as a son. But Jesus, what about me? What about the others? Who will take care of us? Who will love us as you did? How can God let this happen to you, his only son? All I have, Jesus, is questions, and my heart and mind scream out in pain, as it did the first day that you released me from my demons. I won't go back to those days, Lord. I will follow you to the grave and anoint your body as you anointed my mind with hope, love, and compassion. Jesus, my Jesus, my Saviour. The final witness we hear from was someone who didn't want to be there. The centurion soldier had been given the task with his men of crucifying not only Jesus, but two other thieves, one on his left and one on his right. That day changed his life forever. Stay and stop in my way! Make way! I have never known such a dark sky in the midst of the day. People have always thought of Golgotha skies as dark. A storm's veil can make the sky darker still, but nothing like this. No clouds, no rain, just darkness like night's blanket for three whole hours. It should have been a warm, bright day. Maybe there God couldn't bear to watch. I watched. The so-called Messiah yelled, asking his God why he had forsaken him. Why had he left him so alone? I think we all felt alone in those hours. We couldn't see far enough to find a colleague or another's face. The daylight has now returned. The sky is clear, bright, but now it just feels so cold. They, the crucified, never end with such loud proclamations, and not usually that quick either. The normal way is slow suffocation, no breath left to speak. It was like this one, the Messiah, chose to go, making some kind of statement, wanting everyone to know. I have been tasked with this job a fair few times. It's part of my service to the Empire, but never before has it felt like this. I'm not scared. I don't get scared. Perhaps in this instance, maybe a bit. But what is bothering me? I'm strong, tough. I'm a leader. Not easily scared. But this one has shaken me. Some deserve crucifixion, some don't. I like to try and figure out which by looking for signs I check the faces of the condemned, check the faces of the onlookers. Looking around, it seemed no two groups of faces were the same. Some were distraught, 
especially as I noticed a small group of women. The priest seemed more pious than ever. Some shouted abuse, telling him to save himself. Others were just in shock. For me, after this experience, I think I now know. Surely there was something in the rumours. Surely there is something beyond him. This man must surely be the son of God. And I just watched him die. When Jesus surrendered himself to die upon the cross. It was in his earthly life his final act of love, his final act of love for us all. And through that act of love, God extends his grace to us all. You have heard the story from those who were present. We have not made it up. It was written down for all to learn about. Ask yourself, could it change your life as it did theirs? Remember, on Good Friday, that God changed the world forever. The Bible tells us that God loved the world so much that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not die but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn it, but to be its saviour. Amen. Amen.